Hey y'all, it's me, Slay by Jordan, and today we have a lengthy video for you all, so stay tuned. We are working with the company West Kiss today. They sent me over this body weight wig. Let's get into the goodies first. This is a 26 inch body wave 13 by 4 HG lace 200% density wig. Let's get into it. And by the way, happy early Valentine's Day. So today we're going to dye this hair like this perfect Valentine's Day red. What we're first going to do is a bleach bath. I'm using my BW2 powder and my 50 volume developer and a bunch of hot water um, that I put in my sink. I mix all three of those components together and we're just going to mix that around until it's like, you know, evenly spread. And then we're just going to dunk our wig in there. Now, off camera, what I did show you all was I did go ahead and put the bleach on the knots and let those fully process before I did the bleach bath. This way, you can ensure that your knots um, are fully bleached because just doing the bleach bath is not going to get your knots uh, processed all the way. So I like to go ahead and do that first. And then I, and then I like to do the bleach bath process. So right now, I'm just dipping the wig in and out. As you can see, my mixture is very watery. I used a lot of water. Um, I recommend if you don't want to do this step twice that you don't make your mixture, don't put a lot of water in your mixture. Put more developer if you want the, um, if you want the solution more running, but don't put a lot of water. After about maybe like 30 minutes, the wig only turned like a, a brown color which wasn't enough for the type of red I wanted. I wanted red and not burgundy. So we had to get this wig lighter. We had to get it to like a, I don't know, like a honey blonde type of honey brown color. Not this kind of brown. Cause this was given like chestnut brown. We needed it, we needed it lighter. So we're gonna have to do uh, the bleaching process again. I rinsed this out with hot water and I used my done dish detergent. I only um, washed it one time. And then after this, I'm gonna show you the next bleaching process that I did. And now into an empty BW2 bucket, I'm going to add some more BW2 powder and some 50 volume developer. I am going to make this consistency runny again, but I won't be using any water at all, just strictly developer. And I'm going to put this solution directly on this damp wig because we need to get it lighter. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix that up for you real quick. I'm going to lay that wig in the sink and then I'm just going to slap that um, mixture all over the wig and brush it through and just, you know, like really work it into that wig. So like I said, I'm just dumping that um, mixture all over the wig and working it all the way through. Never 
You come from a city where there's lean with the rocks, but how the fuck you keep so many secrets? How you pull it peaking, but still be fell with me again? How the fuck you seen so many beaches? Tickets to them places don't come cheap, man. I see it back in the search, but never took it at first, so don't you get it? That's your will. And I let this sit uncovered for another 30 minutes. And I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, I did sew an extra bundle into this wig. I sewed an extra 26 inch um, body weight bundle into this wig for some additional fullness. Now that second bleach process is done, we're going to go ahead and rinse that out with some warm to hot water. And we're going to shampoo it um, twice with our done dish detergent. But don't condition it yet because we're going to color this wig red. And I'll be showing you that in just a few moments. And now to protect from staining our knots, we're going to use this silicone mist conditioner and we're just going to paint it on as if we were bleaching the knots. But instead, we're using conditioner. You could use conditioner or you could use gel for this process. I've seen some people use Vaseline, but in the past when I used Vaseline, I could never fully get uh, the Vaseline out the lace. And that would cause uh, lifting issues on the wig being that, um, you know, Vaseline is oily. So I don't recommend you use Vaseline. Although Vaseline would probably protect it the most, it's just such a hassle getting it out the lace. But with this conditioner or gel, you know, after you shampoo it, like it's gone. But that Vaseline is like a little too thick, so I don't recommend you do that. I just prefer to use conditioner because, I mean, you could just never go wrong with conditioner. Um, the thicker the conditioner, the better, like, you know. And now we're using our Kiss Temptation Crimson. This is like my favorite color. I love Crimson um, and Kiss Temptation or Crimson and Adore. I just love the Crimson, period, no matter um, either brand. So with my first bottle, I'm going to put it in um, the sink with some hot water and we're just going to dip the ends. Then on my second round, I'm going to dip the wig. I'm going to fully submerge it, um, including the lace. And then on that third full bottle, we're going to just, you know, open the wig up and try to get it um, on all the spots that didn't quite take. Um, so I used three full bottles in total, but I dipped the wig in different sections on each full bottle, as you can see. This was the first one, and then we're going to add our second one, you know, just like how I said. So now we're done water coloring. We're going to rinse this out with some cool water. You 
After watercoloring the wig, I wasn't fully satisfied with the color. Um, so I decided to go in my color bin and I found this Adore Wild Cherry. And we're just going to um, add that to the roots of the wig primarily. The roots were um, way lighter than the rest of the hair due to that conditioner and me bleaching the knots before I even bleached the wig. So yeah, they got really, really light and um, I wanted to darken those up a bit or at least just make everything be the same tone. So I took my Adore Wild Cherry and I applied that mainly on the roots. But after a while, I ended up slapping the dye all over the wig, you know, just however I felt. Um, not in a very um, neat um, way. I just literally slapped it on there because the wig was already red, red at this point. I was basically just doing like some color correction. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I tried to do this red with the watercolor the quick way. And, you know, honestly, y'all, I have to recommend that if you're going to dye your wig red, Please paint it on because I find that every time I watercolor a wig red, when the wig is originally black, like the color is just so dull. And if the wig is 613 before, the color turns out pink. So with the reds, yeah, you just, I just prefer that you would paint that color on. Especially if you um, add additional bundles into your wig or you have a very high density wig, just paint it on. Now, in the past, I've did reds where I just watercolored it and it was fine. But those wigs had a more natural density. If your wig is thick like how this wig was, because this wig was thick before I even added the bundle, then yeah, just paint it on. It'll just save you some time. I know you think you watercoloring it is going to save you some time, but you're going to have to go back and fix your mistakes. And yeah, so I let that color sit on the wig for about, I think for about maybe an hour or maybe 30 minutes, one of the two. Um, and then I rinse that out with some cold water. And we are still not done yet with the coloring process, y'all. So just stay tuned. So to make sure that my red is, you know, shining as bright as it possibly can, I'm going to use my Kiss Tentation Clear. This is a clear coat. This just gives your hair additional shine. Um, and, you know, it makes any dull color, you know, shiny. It, it puts the gloss on the hair. It's not really a dye. It's more like a clear coat. Like, you know, like when you get your car washed or the tires washed and they put the, the coating on top, like it just it just makes it shine. So that's what it does for the wig. It just gives it um, additional sheen. And I did this mainly because uh, for the base of the color today, we did the watercolor method. And, you know, like I said, when you watercolor hair red, it be kind of dull. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that we had some shine in this wig. So I put that, um, that Kiss Temptation Clear on there and I brushed that through. Um, and, yeah, and I left that on there for about 10 minutes. I recommend you leaving it on, like, really for at least an hour so you can really get like the maximum results from this of course you know i'm just doing everything uh last minute so you know i'm in a rush so we're well, not really in a rush but really just don't feel like doing it so i don't feel like waiting that long but it still did a little something something but no it really can do a lot of something something but you know make sure you rinse that out with cool water and then now we're going to apply our silicone mix. Um, I can't find my bamboo one, so I'm just using the regular version. Put that all over the wig, brush it through. And after we massage that in, we're going to um, rinse that out again with cool water. Anytime you're rinsing out a semi-permanent or conditioner, please always use cool water. Anytime you're rinsing out permanent color or bleach, you can use hot water. But when you're using semi-permanent colors, um, clear coats, and conditioner I always rinse with cool water so you can lock it into the um cuticle and after that y'all we will finally finally be done with the coloring process we are back with my girl Nisha so let's get this Valentine's Day inspired look started so I went ahead off camera and plucked um the hairline on this wig and now we're just adding our makeup i'm using my ruby kisses level 16 i'm using the lightest shade in that palette i'm going ahead and adding that only on to the um the underside of the lace and we're going to spray it with our freeze spray and blow dryer and then we're going to position the wig 
on her head and sew it down. And now we're going to apply our adhesive. We use four layers today. Once that last layer turns clear, go ahead and lay your lace down. And before I blow dry her hairline and tie her lace down, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off her ear tabs. Sometimes you all, I don't cut off the ear tabs until after I um, lay the lace on the glue. And sometimes I cut them off before I lay them down on the glue. That's just personal preference. But I would recommend, highly recommend for my beginners, you go ahead and cut that excess lace off before you lay your glue down. I just did this because honey, I just, sometimes it happens. <laughs> and I don't even realize it.
Today we are doing a side part, so I'm going to go ahead and part her off before I tie her down with my Ultimate Melt Band from IBHSlays.com for 10 minutes. I blow dry her hair straight off camera with my Mazzani um, heat protectant. And now we're about to cut off that excess lace using our eyebrow razor. Let's get into this lace freshly cut. Of course, you know, we're going to melt it down. But let's also get into this color. Like, this red Onisha, <coughs> chef's kiss, baby. So now we're just going to define that part some more with our, um, our mink little parting comb. And then we're going to use our hot comb to just lay it down. And then we're going to start separating out the hairs we're going to use for our baby hairs. We're just doing two on each side today. You know, keeping it very, you know. Regular and simplistic, but you know, still giving a little, a little jizz, a little jazz. We're going to spray our hair flex hairspray to melt that lace down. We're going to tie it again with our ultimate melt band for about five to ten minutes. And while it's tied down, we're going to go ahead and flatten that wig some more with our hot comb and wax stick as needed. And we're also going to layer the hair. And guess what? For you all today, I showed the entire layering process. So stay tuned. You're going to enjoy. So we're pulling that hair up like straight 180 degrees and we're just going to chop off about, um, I think I chopped off like four inches. And um, every time you chop off a section, you're going to take a piece from your previous section and um, put it with your new section. And you're going to use that as your, um, your guide. And you're just going to follow your guide all the way around from one side to the other. Um, as you see when I'm combing the hair, if you look closely, you can see what the previously cut hair is and you can see what the new hair is. 
and you know you're able to easily tell what needs to be cut um always keep a guide with you when cutting you can never go wrong um I prefer to lay your hair this way, like how we were taught in cosmetology school, because if you decide that you want to actually wear your hair straight, your hair won't be choppy. I find that when you do a lot of freehand um, layering, where you're just randomly cutting the hair, you know, just adding layers, you know, as you go, when you go to straighten the hair, the haircut is uneven and it's very choppy. So I like to do it this way. That way, whatever style she chooses to wear, her cut is on point. Now after what we have did, what I call the interior layers, we're gonna do the outer layers, which is the face framing. I start from her chin and I cut diagonally downward. And I do that all the way around, which gives the hair sort of a V cut, like a V-ish, U-ish type cut. When you do layers, um, like the layered cut that I just showed you before we even did the face framing, your hair is gonna fall in like a VU-ish type shape anyway, but we just dramatize it with this. Um, and this really makes those layers pop. They make them just sit so pretty, like, I love it. This is gonna give you like the perfect long layered haircut. And it's also gonna be perfect for when you wear it straight as well. So just follow your boy. And after we do our layers, we're gonna take that um, elastic band off and we're gonna proceed with doing our baby hair process, which you already know. You gotta hot comb them, cut them, curl them, and swoop them. I'm gonna get a t-shirt that say that. Hot comb, cut, curl, swoop. And now we're using our foam and mousse to lay our baby hairs down. Just doing them regular, not too, too dramatic. Um, because we want the main um, focal point of this wig to be um, the hair color and the curls and the layers. Um, y'all, I'm thinking about doing virtual online classes. Would y'all be interested in that? Let me know in the comments below because we can really get... It's 2023. We can really get some things into motion, honey. You know, I'm all about it. You know. Where I go even further into detail and, you know, explaining, like, every single product, you know, up close, better camera quality and all that. Like, we can really make it. We can get it popping. And I can do the price. It's very reasonable. Like, you know, just just let me know in the comments below if you if you interested in that. Anyways, back to the regular schedule program. We're gonna take our Sebastian Shaper hairspray and we're gonna spray that all over the hair like go freaking crazy. We're gonna spray all, this all over the hair and brush it out and then we're gonna proceed to curl. Spraying the hairspray before you curl is gonna give your, uh, it's gonna make your curls last longer. Um, it just does for some reason. We're curling the hair today using our one and a half inch curling iron from T3. Um, we're just gonna curl the hair and pin each curl as we go.
We finished the other side in the front off camera. Her baby hairs are dry. We're gonna take her wrap strips off. And then of course, we're gonna, you know, customize her baby hairs off camera. Now we're gonna take our um, Ruby Kisses um, foundation again. And we're gonna use the level nine. And I'm gonna put that in her part. Um, I like using this for my clients who have a more deeper skin tone. I don't like to use the powder cause I only be using one powder which is like very, very light. Um, it can make their part look ashy sometimes. So if their skin tone is deeper, I'll go ahead and use the um, foundation, the Ruby Kisses foundation. And I just use um, one that's more like a skin tone light color. This is not her skin um, tone color by any means. I go lighter than her actual color, but the foundation is more like of a skin tone type of makeup product than the powder. The powder is just like, boom, I'm there. <laughs> I like to use that for my lighter clients. But anyway, we're going to take these pin curls out and we're going to comb those curls out. And baby, when I tell you it's giving very much wifey Valentine's Day, all eyes on me, red fire. Like, it's just giving, honey. I love it. And I love this style on Nisha so much. And let's go ahead and do a short recap.
Make sure you check the description box below for more information on this wig. I thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.